So, good afternoon, everyone. So, welcome you to our next discussion about earth science. So, last time we discussed the interconnectedness of the first spheres and how it affects the, with everything on our planet. Now, let's go back from the start and discover the realms of the time and space as we, as we fly back in time to know how the universe started, how it is originated, and what are the different theories that talks about its origin and what will happen to it in the future. So, universe. So, from it, Primarily, the universe is a totally of space and time, of the past, present, and future. So with many galaxies that are spinning within its vastness, these are the numerous collections of heavenly bodies held together by gravitational attraction that are light years away from each other. So the story on how the universe came to be is fascinating, fascinating contradiction on one hand, many of many things that had go just right for universe to turn on the way it did, uh, it did and develop. On the other hand, the formation of galaxies similar to our Milky Way is an entirely predictable consequence of laws of physics, and it seems to have happened more than once. So we will start the story from the beginning. In the very beginning, and learn why generations of stars had to be born and die explosive deaths before Earth could exist. We will look at what it takes galaxies to form and for objects to form alongside it, so as well as why nature of those objects depends on how far away from the central, central starting point they form. And we, when we say about totality of space and time, it includes the structure of everything. So the structure of everything, it includes the smallest unit in the universe up to the whole universe itself, starting from the quarks, subatomic particles, the atoms, molecules, and matter. And these small units comprises the planets, our solar system, stars, clusters, galaxy, galaxy clusters, and lastly, the super clusters. All in all, the structure of everything includes all of these things that form our universe as of today. So say for example, an eagle nebula, clone nebula, sol nebula, and lastly, our own Milky Way. So all of these galaxies mentioned, mentioned are governed by the four fundamental forces. So without these forces, our universe won't be the universe as we see it today. So in the beginning, so before let's move to insight and how began and evolved, let us first define no more about our own universe. Let's start with the study of cosmology. So cosmology is a study of the universe, including its properties, structures, and evolution. So, and this science is governed by the two different approaches and aspects aspect with all this paradigm. So there are two paradigms in interpretative frameworks used to interpret world around us, the conventional paradigm and the historical genesis paradigm. So each has a different view on how long the earth has been here, including the origin of rocks, animals, the stars, each is the same data, but interprets it according to different historical assumptions. So the genesis paradigm interprets everything in light of the timeline and events recorded in the first chapter of Genesis. 
the conventional paradigm interprets everything according to the timeline and events constructed over 200 years as a, repris as a replacement for the biblical history. Bibli biblical history. So the conflict between these two is competing history and the world is ultimately with respect to time. So now let's dive further into the realms of space and time. Let's further discuss the things we need to know of our own universe. Fundamental forces. So these are the four fundamental forces. So the fundamental forces that governs the behavior of the whole universe, uh, these interactions in physics, in any of these were basic forces. So first we have gravitational, electromagnetic, strong, and weak that govern how objects or particles interact and how certain particles decay. So all the known forces of nature can be traced to these fundamental interactions. So gravity is a proper property of mass and it attracts to bodies and light responds into it. It, it reshapes between the space and time and it also acts between object and mass. So electromagnetic force includes the interactions of charged particles and it's responsible for all surface interactions of matter and it binds atoms together. So strong nuclear force, on the other hand, holds and binds protons and neutrons together in the nucleus of, of the atom, while the weak nuclear for force is responsible for nuclear radiation and fission that can be found in radioactive decay. Okay, composition of universe. So only about 4% all the mass and energy in the universe is matter. So with which we are similar here on Earth. So most of the ordinary matter consists of hydrogen and helium. So located in the interstellar and intergalactic space so only about one half of 1% of the critical density of the universe is found in star. So dark matter and dark energy, which, which had not yet been detected in earthbound laboratories, account for 95% of the contents of the universe. <clears throat> Excuse. When we say dark matter, uh, it refers to, ex to exotic matter that interacts only weakly with ordinary matter. So while no such matter has ever been directly observed in the laboratory, its existence has long been suspected. While dark energy, bizarre from the of bizarre form of matter, or perhaps a property of vacuum itself, that is characterized by a large negative pressure or a repelling force, can cause the expansion of universe to accelerate or speed up. Big Bang Theory. Now let's have the full discussion in conventional paradigm that talks about the Big Bang Theory as its origin. So what is really the Big Bang Theory? According to the Big Bang Theory, the universe blinked violently into existence 13.77 billion years ago. So the Big Bang often describe an explo explosion, but imagining it is a numerous fireball isn't accurate. The Big Bang involved sudden expansion of matter, energy, space, from a single point. So the kind of Hollywood explosion that might came to mind involves the expansion of matter and energy within space. But during the Big Bang, space itself was created. So the Big Bang theory was the first proposed by the Belgian priest George Limtree in 1920s. So framework for the models relies on Albert Einstein general relativity and unsimplifying assumptions such as homogeneity and isotropy of space. The theory explains the origin of the universe. I suggest that the universe, our solar system included, is a part of an expanding system where all galaxies are moving farther away with each passing day. As we can see in, from the image, 
we started knowingly and continue to expand throughout time. So this is so this is a 3D image of a universe from the beginning and how it is evolving in the present. So it it, it is continuously expanding as we speak. <clears throat> At the start of the Big Bang, the universe was too hot and dense so to, be ev to be anything but sizzle of particles smaller than atoms. But it, as it expanded, it also cooled. Eventually, some of the particles collide, collided and stuck together. So those collisions produce hydrogen and helium, the most common elements in the universe, along with a small amount of helium. But 20 billion years ago, an explosion hurled these materials in all directions and continuously expanded. After which gas is cold and condensed, forming stellar system that we all that we call galaxies. 20 billion years in the future, the expansion will stop and gravitational attraction will not follow where stellar material material will collide to form a new hot then fireball and process starts again. Big Bang Theory. So now let's do it step by step so, so that we can understand more. So first in the beginning, uh, the Big Bang was not an explosion in space. So it was the appearance of space everywhere in the universe from a primordial fireball. So in the universe, it's very long. It's underwent an incredible growth spurt during. So in the universe, it's very long. It is underwent an incredible growth spurt. So during this burst of an explosion, which is known as inflation, and universe grow expon exponentially and double in size. Uh, at most 90 times. So uh, after inflation, the universe continued to grow, but at a slower rate. As time and space expanded, the universe cold and matter formed. For the first 380,000 after the Big Bang, however, the intense heat from the universe creation is made essential too hot for light to shine. So atoms crash together with enough force to break into a dense. I'll pick plasma of protons, neutrons, and electrons that scat scattered like fog. Let there be light. So about 380 years after the Big Bang, matter cold enough for electrons to combine with a nuclei to form new, neutral atoms. So this phase is known as a recombination. The absorption of the free electrons caused the universe to become transparent. Cosmic Dark Ages. So roughly 400 million years after the Big Bang, the universe began to come out of its dark ages. So this period universe evolution is called the age of reionization. Clumps of gases collapse to form the very first stars and galaxies. Expansion. So these are the age of expansion, more stars and more galaxies. Galaxies. Next, we are uh, the birth of our solar system. So after the came birth of our own solar system that includes our sun and planets. So lastly, we the universe will continue to expand. So you may wonder how I how the universe, how a universe can be created out of nothing, or how we can know that the Big Bang happened at all. Creating a universe out of nothing is only beyond the scope of this chapter. So, but there is a way to think about it since 
as for now, the Big Bang really happened at all. There are very good reasons to accept that is indeed how our universe came to be. So we know that tools are powerful enough to dip into space and to see the arrival of light from early universe history. Astronomers can detect the light from approximately 775,000 years after the Big Bang is thought, is thought to have occurred. So physicists tell us that if the Big Bang happened, the particles within the universe will be close together at this time. So there are several independent pieces of evidence that support the Big Bang theory. So the Big Bang theory. Everything started with a bang. So one, the cosmos goes through a super fast inflation, expanding from the size of an atom to that to a grateful in a tiny fraction for a second. Two, post inflations happen in the first in a seething hot soap of electrons, quarks, and other particles. Three, a rapidly cooling cosmos permits quarks to clump into protons and neutrons. Four, rapid for the universe is a period is still and too hot to form atoms. So charged electrons and protons prevent light from shining the universe here in super hot fog. So five electrons combine with the protons and neutrons to form atoms. So mostly hydrogen and helium. Light can finally shine in this age. So six, gravity makes hydrogen and helium gas collides to form a giant clouds that become galaxies. A smaller clumps of gas collapse to form a first star, the first star. So seven, as galaxies cluster together, under gravity, the first stars die and spew heavy elements into space. Those will eventually turn into the new stars and planets. So Big Bang evidences. So there are several pieces of evidence that support the Big Bang theory. First, we have the cosmic microwave radiation. Second, the composition of universe. Third, we have age of stars. And fourth, the rich shift data. So cosmic microwave background. So this is exactly what we see and we look about 375 years after the Big Bang. So the fog is referred to the cosmic microwave background. So it has been carefully mapped throughout the sky so there is temperature changes where evidence or heat left over from the Big Bang. The early universe should have been very hot. The, micro, my, the cosmic microwave background radiation is a remnant heat left over from the Big Bang. The map displays the cosmic microwave background temperature, but this variation translates differences in density of matter and in the early universe. The red patches are the highest density regions, and the blue patches are the lowest density. Higher density regions represent the eventual beginnings of stars and planets. So according to the Big Bang theory, the universe was originally just energy. As the universe expanded, the energy should, should have cooled. Some would turn into matter. The cold energy should still found throughout the entire universe, with very small fluctuations found throughout. The Wilkinson mic microwave anisotropy probe and Planck space probe has measured the small fluctuations in the cosmic background and radiations. These differences uh, imprinted the background of the radiation from a tiny fluctuation and quantum energy of the original expanding universe. So the theory predicts the differences with these probes and discovered by the many measuring and size of clumps. So you can calculate the age of universe with great accuracy. So this gives an age for the universe of 13.8 billion years. So now we have the image transformation about the first sighting of the cosmic background microwave, uh, cosmic background microwave radiation to the latest image map by the Wilkinson micro, my, microwave anisotropy probe 
both three are simulations of radiation technology has been there to provide us clues to our universe. So composition of universe. So other piece of evidence from the universe, other piece of evidence come from the abundance of the elements we see in the universe. So for the Big Bang accurate, the simplest elements would have been the first form and all heavier elements would have come from clear fusion inside the stars. So when astronomers look into elements in the universe, we find the identifiable matter in the universe is mostly hydrogen. This matches the prediction made by the Big Bang. So in fact, measurement shows show that this the universe is 74% hydrogen and 24% helium. So in order to create this much helium from nuclear fusion, the universe would have to be at least 12 billion years. So third, we have the ages of the stars. So the universe cannot be the younger than all the stars. So stars from in different sizes, uh, actually the col from collapse of a nebula or cloud of dust and gas in space. So the larger star fuse hydrogen into helium is at a tremendous rate uh, and die a supernova explosion after only a few million years. Smaller stars take long to use up their hydrogen. Some stars, such as our sun, are formed partly from exploded remains of older stars. So the older stars are among the smallest and the, and are called the red dwarf stars. So estimates of the age of the oldest red dwarfs give, give an age of the universe for at least 13 billion years. So redshift data. As we have Edwin Hubble, so justified, Edwin Hubble justified the metric theory through his observation that the universe is continuously expanding, galaxies are moving away from each other. So by studying the spectra produced by the galaxies throughout the universe, we can identify that most objects are moving away from each other and that the universe is expanding. Through Hubble's law, which is, which is the rate at which galaxy is moving is directly proportional to its distance from us. So in other words, the farther away the galaxy is from us, the faster it travels away. And if you know how the universe, how fast the universe is, you can calculate roughly how long ago the universe began for it to reach its current size. So give us a, a universe that at least 12 billion years old. So read shift, the read, Shift basically is the shift in expanding the wave wavelengths or lights toward direct the color. So if you see moving object from way, you will see wavelengths toward the red color. And this red shift suggests that space itself expanding and implies that at some point the universe was smaller. So this to further visualize the red shift, let's look at this image. So here we can see the change here we can see the changes in wavelengths toward the red color of some galaxies observed from the Earth as the distance is getting away as is getting farther away. So limitations of Big Bang. So Big Bang limitations. So we have a monopole structures. We have monopole structure, no magnetic monopoles have been observed. So the Big Bang theory predicts the heavy stable magnet magnetic mono monopoles and in the very early universe. So, however, no magnetic monopoles have been observed. Uh, makes no attempt to explain how structures like stars and galaxies came to exist in, exist in the universe. 
So horizon fluctuation in the same B region. So temperature of the same Bs observed to vary slightly across and based on Big Bang expansion. So distant region of space is opposite direction of stars are far apart and they could never be in casual contact with each other. So however, the evidence showing the uniformity of cosmic microwaves background temperature shows that the regions must have been contact with the other in the past. So flatness, geometry of Earth. So Wilkinson's microwave anisotropy probe revealed the geometry of the universe is nearly flat. However, under the Big Bang theory, there should be curvature as time grows. So overall, uh, the universe is a very vast and we haven't seen all of these things in it. So we might not know that we, that will happen in the future, but thankfully it was created. The universe that remained in the past is our very own universe as of today. And it will likely be the same universe in the future. Uh, that's all for today. Uh, bye, class.